Packer and Durham, a Thursday morning, July 2nd. 844 say ACCN is the number for the program. The first of at least three guests that I'm aware of uh, soon to join us right now. That'd be the <laughs> basketball coach for the Georgia Tech Jackets down there. The Yellow Jackets taking care of visitors at home looking for a haircut. I can tell right from the get go. Josh Pastor, good morning. How are you? Good morning, guys. Yeah, I do need a haircut. I haven't got a haircut since February, believe it or not. And you're you're lucky that I was coming on your show, so I put some water on my hair. Otherwise, <laughs> it would have been just all over the place. And um, now I do have a lot of curls. There's a lot of curls there. But if it wasn't for your show, that I would not have wetted my hair. But I have not gotten a haircut since February, believe it or not. Wow. How about that? So, I, I do what, have, I, you I want to tell him how to fix that pack? Well, well, you I know, got more I, hair than both of you guys. Yeah, you know, I, I don't worry. I, even though I get haircuts, it takes two minutes for me to get a haircut. I'm ready for it all to fall out, be one less thing for me to have to do. Uh, but I, I am curious to pick your brain a little bit during this pandemic because there's so much stuff going on. Uh, forget the haircuts a second. Just from a recruiting perspective, I always love to listen to what coaches have done. Uh, you know, we got the dead period extended. I mean, it's just a completely, totally different universe you would love to have guys on campus. That's kind of been eliminated, period. So what's it been like from a recruiting perspective? Well, you know, first of all, I love recruiting. I, I love recruiting. It is something that mm -hmm. I love to do. What I would tell you, though, is you're sort of zoomed out because you, you, there's, only, there's <laughs> only so much zooming you can do with the recruits. And you are constantly on Zoom with the recruits or FaceTime. And that's a great thing. But after a while, you know, there's there's only so much you can continue to say because because they have not played um, or have you have been able to be there in person to see them play, um, you know, it, it just kind of gets a little bit of a redundant in a sense. And so you've got to try to find a way to keep to keep fresh, to keep the enthusiasm, to keep the passion. Um, they did start live streaming events this past weekend that high school events that we could actually watch. Um, uh, but it's been new. And, I, and I'm and i going to be honest with you, I don't think they're going to open recruiting until in, maybe not until April. We were on an ACC head coach's call, and that's been mentioned that that's a possibility that that could last all the way until next April. I mean, I'm not saying that is, but that is a possibility. So we have to continue to be prepared for that. We've got to stay, I've used the word nimble, we have to be very nimble in this time. We've mm. got to be able to be kind of on the fly. And on the fly, you got to just figure it out. And that's kind of what we're doing with the recruiting part. And, you know, it's just you're, – you're just – that's there's nothing else you can do about it. Josh, you and I have had always really interesting conversations about the sport and the way the sport kind of fits with football and so forth, right? Um, here, here's, my, here's my fear, Okay. A lot of the conversation, and rightly so because of the financials involved, have been about college football's return to the landscape, right? And sports coming back and the, and the $4 billion and all the things that have been written about football. But yet, you just mentioned something else that brings us back to presence with me. College basketball is really going to end up having to fight for its space to have a season. I mean, I saw what Rick Pitino said yesterday about league games and starting in January. Are you concerned about the sport now if hypothetically recruiting gets pushed back to April? Then all of a sudden they say, well, now, wait a second. You know, all these games and tournaments and so forth in November, that may not happen. We're going to minimize the schedule, things of that nature. Are you concerned about how college basketball fits in this world a little bit now? Well, Wes, and let me just even finish on the part of recruiting. I think you're going to see a lot of kids at some point just start uh, uh, making commitments, and they already are without visiting, you know, people are just going to want to make sure they got that scholarship in place. Um, and then, which I mm -hmm. keep saying that if it wasn't for the COVID-19, they would have passed the one-time transfer rule, rule that would have allowed you to transfer without sitting out. That's going to go back on the docket in January of 2021, which eventually is going to get passed. Um, so you got to factor that into your recruiting as well, too. Um, so all that being said, there, it's, it's, there's going to be a lot of decisions going to be made in recruiting without actually ever probably visiting campus. That's just going to how it's going to be, uh, for this year. Um, regarding the season, look, I, I, you know, obviously we're going to do whatever 
whatever our bosses tell us to do. So, I mean, our guys, myself, we all want to play. Uh, every coach wants to play. Every student athlete wants to play. No one's going to do anything without the first and foremost thinking of the health and safety of the, of the student athletes and the staff. Uh, so that's going to be decisions made not by coaches. It's going to be made by administrators and presidents of universities or institutes. And then obviously with state and, and local uh, um, you know, health officials. Um, so it will be interesting. Uh, yes, we need football. We all want football to play. Um, I, I, I do believe again, you know, me, I'm an internal optimist. I look at the glass as overflowing. <laughs> I just think there's so many incredible minds working on these as in terms of, of, of science and doctors and all those type of things that, at, that at some point, by the time we start in our season in November, they, they they'll have it figured out. Maybe they'll have the, the virus understood even more. They'll have some kind of therapeutic drug, I, you know, hopefully a vaccine at some point. But I just think they've got to have that. Now, I do know from what I hear is they've got to find a way to play the NCAA tournament. You two would know it better than I would, but I think it would not be good for the NC2A to have to have back-to-back years because, as you guys know, the NC2A's mm-hmm. revenue really comes from the men's basketball NC2A tournament. So to have two years in a row of not having it, it would be a hard hit for everybody, especially a hard hit. It's already a hard hit as it is, and then you kind of have a double whammy on that. But but you're, so it's a very it's a balance because kids, the student athletes want to play, the coaches want to play, but you've also, you know, they're student athletes, they're not athlete students, and 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 you know the health and safety of everybody is going to be first and foremost on the decisions. Josh, I know it's tough trying to keep uh, up with everybody, but you know the other thing that's also coming to play here, up and above COVID nineteen, the pandemic has been the racial and social unrest in this country, and the fact that we, that we have seen multiple uh, student athletes within just the ACC alone. It's going around and around the country, but even within the ACC, big time, that student athletes have taken ownership of having a platform to speak out. Uh, what have you told your team in terms of taking a stance? And being smart about going about your business. Yeah, we, we've had some we've had some Zoom uh, meeting. We we obviously had an initial one originally about that subject, um, um, and then you know we've we've talked a bunch uh, since then in in in, in regards to um, um, you know uh, uh, platforms or to be able to express yourself. First of all, just in general for student athletes, I think it's a great thing uh, for young people. You know, especially for student athletes. Um, you know, we haven't gotten maybe to the real specifics of it, of, of, of when we get back, because we haven't been together as a team. And and um, um, and so on, on how you're able to want to uh, uh, do different things as a as a as a group or a unit uh, into the maybe to the exact specifics. Part of that is because right now we're not even allowed to be together, um, believe it or not, because of, mm. you know, because of the covid-19, you know, we, we're not cleared medically to have a. A, a group of us uh, together. So um, we'll get into more of those talks as, you know, as we get into the fall and we're able to kind of get back as a, as a team and, and, and in person. But we've had a lot of good Zoom just in general conversations. I think those details of those specifics on, on how people want to express themselves, we'll get really into that uh, as we get back together in a team setting physically um, and, and in person. Mm. Um, God willingly in August, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, as we see now, you just, it's just one day at a time is all you can do. And, and, uh, but we are, you know, Georgia Tech announced that we are going back to in-person classroom settings uh, for our fall, for our fall semester. So that would be the first time we could really get our entire team uh, back at once. July 20th, the NC2A the passed where you are allowed to work out with your, like we call it CARA required activity in a sense and accountable athletic required activity. Um, um, but we haven't, that what hasn't been determined for Georgia tech is how many people are going to be allowed in the gym at the time. How many times are we going to be, you know, mm-hmm. how many coaches can be with each guy? Is there a manager is going to be allowed in the gym? How, you know, so all those type of things still haven't been worked out for the July 20th countable athletic related activity type. Uh, when we get to that point. If there's any program in the ACC that wants to get together and practice and try and recapture what they had, I can't imagine that that, there'd be any program more anxious to get that going than yours simply because of the way you finished, 
uh, and the fact that all the principals, Sands, James Banks, come back for you. I mean, Michael DeVoe, Jose Alvarado, Moses Wright, Jordan Usher, plus a very talented recruiting class, including the player of the year in the state of North Carolina in Tristan Maxwell. I mean, Josh, can you not, I mean, do you, you lie awake at night thinking we have got to play because this might be our chance to turn the corner? Well, listen, we need, I want to play. We have a team that I really like our group. Um, we're older. Uh, maybe if there's ever a year to be older, this is the year because who knows of how much practice time you could possibly <laughs> get. Um, so, you, you know, we might not be able to put new things into our system and just kind of go with what we want, uh, with what we did from last year. So and we've got really good guard play. Um, we're going to have to, kind of, you know, obviously, if, 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 assuming there's a season, you know, we're going to have to stay healthy and do our part and, and continue to get better. But I love our group. Now, you know, you're looking at me as Mr. Optimist, as I know, if there is no season, I just say, hey, we finished fifth place in the ACC last year. You know what I mean? And, for, and that includes for the next year, too, I guess. I don't know. So um, uh, it depends on how you look at it, I guess. I mean, we finished on a great run. So you just keep that momentum going in for another year if that didn't if we didn't have that opportunity to play. But no, we want to play. We really want to play. I, I, I love our group. I love our team. Um, our guys are itching to get on the floor. Um, look, I, I would tell you, I, I watched a um, a, um, an, a, high, a, a, a a AAU or grassroots basketball tournament online this past weekend, and the and, and the and the and the young people that were were just, I mean, besides some people wearing masks and that there was no um, handshaking at the end of the game, you wouldn't realize that we we're in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, the intensity of the games, the intensity of the competition, I'm not saying good or bad or anything. I'm just saying in general, um, it was in that moment. It was almost like there was nothing going on. And, 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 the, and the young, uh, uh, student athletes in high school were, were competing as like, it was, you know, the state championship in a sense. And, um, and that was, you know, and that's going to be going on moving forward for the high school kids for us for recruiting. So that will continue to be interesting. I think basketball players are going to continue to find ways to want to play an open gym. You know how it is, uh, Mark and West. They want to, they want to compete. Mm-hmm. They want to get through it. Um, and the other thing with our team is with our guys, you know, I've always believed in guard play. Um, we do have good guards. I think the best way to have success is you've got to have, you know, it's all about, it's all about your guards, and and for this year, we really have good guards. Uh, I want one more question, Josh, for you. Um, we we've heard athletic directors talk about this. We've heard commissioners talk about this. I'm not sure we've had a coach break this down for us. But name, image, and likeness is front and center too. In addition <laughs> to all this other stuff that we've got going on, uh, what are your major concerns about name, image, and likeness, if you have any? Well, look, we at, at, in, at this time period, we've got to do whatever is best for the student athlete. I think that's that's key point number one. We've got to find what's best for the student athlete. How name, image, likeness will work? I think that's you know, you know the that's going to have to be worked out through athletic directors, presidents of schools, uh, um, you know, conference commissioners on how all that's going to work, and, and and still within a framework of the NCAA. I know they're asking for help from Congress on, on, you know, devising a bill on that. So it's a uniformed act all across the country. Um, but I, I'm a big believer um, in, in what's best for, for the student athlete. I think that's, that's really important on whatever's best for them. Um, that being said, I, you know, it's going to be interesting with each, each individual market because, um, um, you know, not everyone's going to demand a name, image, and likeness opportunity. I mean, it's just, it's just not, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like not everyone's going to play in the mm-hmm. NBA. 99.9% of, of, of basketball players are not going to have an, are not going to get drafted or play in the NBA. The NBA is nearly an impossible league to make. It's that hard of a league to make. And so you have such a small percentage and that could be the same percentage for the name, image, and likeness possible uh, possibility uh, that only that small percentage are going to get opportunities for, you know, for a name, image, likeness deal. So it's too, I think it's to be determined, but I use the word at the beginning, nimble. And if you're not nimble in this time period right now, you're going to get left behind. And that includes in scheduling. Mm-hmm. Like, 
and I, and I like people say, well, coach, you said you would never play a, a home and home with a with a with Georgia State, or you you're darn right, I didn't. But after COVID nineteen, we did a two for one for Georgia State, a two for one with UAB. <laughs> Why? Because of budget. Because of budget, we had to we had to be nimble, and we've had to adjust. And I think that's going to be mm-hmm. the same thing with name, image, and likeness. You can't be thinking in the past. You got to be thinking in the future. Same thing with with allowing student athletes to express themselves. You got to. You, you, you got to keep moving forward with the times. You got to be nimble on stuff. I don't know, again, how many student athletes are going to get opportunities on name, image, likeness uh, to really get, um, you know, money from it. That's going to be, again, we'll see the market on that. Uh, that being said, though, but again, whatever's best for the student athlete, our philosophy has got to be that for all of us at this time period and, and let the chips fall where they fall. I tell you what, uh, it's always great to visit with you. Appreciate perspective. Uh, love the enthusiasm and passion you got for the game. Stay well and uh, keep in touch. We look forward to catching up again soon, okay? Well, I appreciate you guys. Listen, I just want to let you know that every morning going into it, it, last season, I, was, I listened to you guys, I watched you guys, and my entire goal, and I told our team this, we had to get out of the glob. And we finished the we, – we, we finished – no. And I want some credit from you guys. I want some credit because the season happened so fast. We got first place at the Glob. And, and, we, and, and, and don't forget that. Like, we, we won the Glob. And so I want to make sure that you guys give us enough shout-outs that because all year long you talked about the Glob – and we won the glob, and there should be some, we should get a plaque or something for the glob it, that we won. You know, I tell you what, g- give me ten seconds, Wes. Cover me for ten seconds. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, I know, I think I know what he's going to do here, and this is scary that he's going to go get this. Um, yeah, you did win the glob, and by the way, it was the second winning record in ACC play since Stephon Marbury in 1996. You deserve you deserve plenty no, of kudos. We, There's no doubt about our, that our, for the way you guys finished. Six and two in your last eight to go eleven and nine. Heavens, yeah. Oh, here it is. I knew it. Yeah. There you go. Glob (laughs) champions, right there. We should send this down to you. Hey. Right there, glob champs. You want to just send it to us? Send it to you. Send it to. Hey, we won. I listened every morning, and our goal was to win the glob, and we won the glob. So I, we should, we should get the, we should get a plaque or something. You got to get that. Every show you talk the glob. You're us. The glob. You guys made that a point, so we won the glob. That's, you know. All right. I love it. Take care, my man. Always great to visit. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Josh Josh Pastner, uh, not only a guy who went 11-9 and in the ACC, the uh, glob champion, Pac, uh, 